and thanks for subscribing and thank you for liking. Um, it means a lot to me as I, as I make these little videos thinking of ways to help you improve. I myself think of ways to help myself improve. In fact, recently I've been working on the Bach Chacon so I can teach it or explain how to go about playing it to violin lab members. So as I practice, I often run into situations where I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, plateau, I, I'm plateauing in some way. And so I have to think of what else can I do? So if we, when you see in the title here on these little reflections, if you see like backdoor practice hack, well, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about trying to break through plateaus, going into the brain through a back door. Most likely you are, you have good practice habits. You know what to do. You've been doing repetitions. You've used a metronome. You've been, you use tuning apps. You, you know, you've done everything you can. So this one is this little practice technique that I have found to be very useful is where I give my other hand a job to do when I experience a recurring hardship in the opposite hand. Usually it's the left hand. Usually it is something in the left hand. It could be intonation. It could be, um, usually it's, it's, it's intonation. And I just, in those moments, because I've already practiced it many, 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 many times, I say, okay, well, right hand, I have a job for you to do, and this is what I want you to do. So then when I think about my right hand, what I think happens is it, it allows my subconscious mind to take over. It occupies my conscious mind because I think sometimes we psych ourselves out and we're, we come to a hard spot and we're like, uh-oh, am I going to get it? And you're, and you're doing everything you can, you're focusing and you're concentrating and then sometimes you don't get it. So by occupying my conscious mind, then it allows my subconscious mind to work better. So here's an example. So in the, the beginning of the Chaconne, um, between four and three. I mean, I, I, I would say there was a period of time where I definitely got it wrong more than I got it right. So th this is where I, I said, all right, you know, I have practiced this a lot many times. I'm gonna give my right hand a job to do. So right hand, here is your job and here's what I'm going to be telling you when we get there. You are going to do your best, make your best legato, you're gonna connect from this to here. So you're going to prepare your string crossing. You're gonna have finger motion, the pinky is going to gently lower to, to the G string. So that's your job. There is another place later on. I mean, it's only like 86 measures later, but it feels like like three years later. Then this very fast section. That spot there. Intonation here I find I found was just so, so hard, especially here. So, I mean, I, you know, practiced it in many, many ways. Still was having trouble getting in tune. So my, the job I gave my right hand was this. I said, right arm, right hand, what I want you to do, when I, when you get to the up bow, 
So right hand, here's your job. You are going to wrist, you're going to lower yourself a little bit, okay? Index finger, you're gonna push in a little bit. Bow here, you are going to kind of reduce your tilt by about 5%. In other words, you're going to get a little sticky, and you're going to get stickier to the bridge. And that's what you're going to think about. So then, when I get there, I have something concrete to occupy my conscious mind. So that my subconscious mind can just let my fingers, you know, go to the right spot. So just try that little technique. And, and what I want you to do is to say, all right, I have practiced you. I'm going to let you do your thing. Right hand, here's my job for you. And here's what I'm going to think about. Anyway, give it a try. Would love to know what you think.